said and his personality power and overthrow by edward mckenry bounds chapter 9 the power of the devil christ's physical sufferings before pilat his awful scourging with the roman thongs his hanging between heaven and earth by copper nails his bleeding bro surmounted with a wreath of thorns were no more severe perhaps than many saints endured upon crosses just after his day and later in the fires of smithfield the inexplicable the inexplicable mental suffering of christ when god withdrew his face from him was the suffering that broke his pure heart when christ's physical sufferings were at the climax then it was that god permitted the soul of jesus to enter for a few moments into the soul of death the horror a sinner experiences the moment he is adrift from time and his hope is dead jesus could not bear it for a moment and cried my god my god why hast thou forsaken me sinna o sinna if christ if christ's heart was broken at the momentary experience of a soul lost eternally what will you do h w h the power of satan is far greater than that of god's highest and saintliest earthly ones in the third chapter of jakaria we have the picture of his power with god's high official representatives joshua the high priest is there the angel of the lord is there and standing at joshua's right to resist all his righteous acts in satan Joshua and the angel realizing their insufficiency when contending with Satan they send a cry to heaven the lord rebuke thee o satan the lord rebuke thee o satan Jude gives us this item Michael the archangel when contending with the devil he disputed about the body of Moses does not bring him a railing accusation but saith the lord rebuke thee whatever this obscure text may mean in regard to this contest between Michael and the devil while it teaches us spirit and tongue control it does without obscurity or doubt clearly show that an archangel's strength is not sufficient to contend single handed and alone with the devil daniel gives a side glance into the power and conflicts which exist in the unseen and spiritual world which lies so near our own 
which has so much to do with us where our spiritual battles are fought and victories won daniel had been praying 3 weeks before the angel and the answer came then said he unto me fear not daniel for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy god thy words were heard and i am come for thy words but the prince of the kingdom of persia withstood me one and 20 days but lo mikhail one of the chief princes came to help me we see how he plans if he cannot keep people from praying nor absolutely prevent the answer to prayer he can cause delay in the answer to prayer that he may discourage and break down faith and discount urgent importunate praying he has power to cast into prison to the little pious church at smyrna jesus christ writes in commendation warning and consolation fear none of those things which thou shall suffer behold the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation 10 days be thou faithful unto death and i will give thee a crown of life there are special seats or headquarters of his power places where the devil makes his home and rules with an absolute sway to this christ refers in his letter to the church of pergamos i know thy works and where thou dwellest even where satan's seat is and thou boldest fast my name and has not denied my faith and has not denied my faith even in those days wherein antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where satan dwelleth some said they were jews but were the synagogue of satan are there churches which are called christian but are churches of satan in christ in christ's letters to the seven churches in asia we see how the ascended and enthroned son of god presents the same view of the devil the depths of satan are referred to in are referred to in the address to theatera in this revelation of christ to john the devil is still declared to be the great dragon the old serpent the devil and satan he is declared to have great wrath the devil's power is greatly and strangely enhanced by his system of worship which while it degrades it fascinates and holds the system of pagan worship and devotion is very powerful it holds it devotes it holds its devotees by iron chains it is not a work of chance neither does it spring from native religious instincts it is a system of rare power and of rare skill constructed by a graduate in the craft of seduction and delusion satan's hand and head are in it satan's hand and head are in it all planning ordering and inspiring it it is this fact which gives its strength and influence o jerobam who perverted of jerobam who perverted the religious instinct and debased worship for sinister worldly and selfish purposes it is said he ordained him priests for the devils the psalmist declared they sacrificed unto devils the new testament declares that 
the things which the gentiles sacrifice they sacrifice to devils and not to god and i would not that ye should have fellowship with devils ye cannot drink the cup of the lord and the cup of devils ye cannot be partakers of the lord's table and of the table of devils again we have it declared now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils the intensity and power of the devil's worship is illustrated and enforced in the last book of the new testament showing how his worship would increase in intensity and would militate against the worship of the lamb we have all along rival altars and rival worship the devil is the author inspirer and protector of the one and christ is the author inspirer and protector of the true and pure worship there are wonders in each miracles and martyrs in the false and devilish as well as in the true and heavenly revelation summarizes the situation and they had a king over them which is the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in the hebrew tongue is abaddon but in the greek tongue hath his name apollyon one woe is past and behold there come two oaths more hereafter these are not lawless oaths these are not lawless oaths nor are their authors lawless bands disorderly and reckless mobs they are organized the strictest the strictest obedience to the devil prevails devil with devil damned form conquered holds they are principalities and powers not only of high and first order in creation not only of great personal power and dignity but ordered and subordered coordinate and subordinate there is the most perfect government military in its drill and discipline absolute and orderly in its arrangement under one supreme dictatorial powerful head with rank and file and officers complete for our wrestling is not against flesh and blood but against principalities against the powers against the world rulers of this darkness against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places these high and wicked spirits are everywhere they fill the air are everywhere intent on evil following the direction of their leader following the direction of their leader carrying out his plans with hearty accord ready obedience and implicit confidence how loath some their nature how marvelous and miracle working their power how high and kingly their influence how martial their purposes all this is vividly and strongly set forth in the 16th chapter of revelation and i saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of lord almighty of that great day of god almighty the power of satan finds its great increase and expression in the efforts and instrumentality of the unregenerate who are by bible teaching under his power subjects of his kingdom of darkness 
more than that so intimate is their connection with satan so close the unity purpose and relationship that they belong to his family his paternity gives birth and character to them his fatherhood binds them in a strong embrace the power of the devil how defiant bold sacrilegious presumptuous how near the sacred person of christ he came see how he invaded the sacred circle of his chosen apostles judas <coughs> falls from his high position tempted possessed by satan and filled with remorse and infamy committing suicide and hell is his forever peter acts as the spokesman of the devil becomes the advocate of a non cross bearing non self denying worldly religion he is so affected by the devil's power that he curses and swears and lies and finds himself all besmirched be mired and be fouled from which he is only saved by the prayers and look of christ john and james fell prey to the devil as they wanted fire to come down from heaven and burn up the samaritans christ sharply shows that they had not his spirit but the other spirit the spirit of the destroyer which actuated them paul had his apostolic plans interfered with and hindered by the devil to the thessalonians he writes wherefore we would have come unto you even i paul once and again but satan hindered us and he bore to his grave the marks of the power of this inviterate for to apostolic fidelity the power of satan is not supreme it is limited it was so in job's case satan could go only so far to afflict since the son of god came into the world the devil's power has been curtailed the cross gave a shock to satan and his power death his realm has been abolished and life and immortality brought to light through the gospel his kingdom received its death stroke on calvary the almighty forces of the gospel are laying hold of the mighty forces of satan satan his prince his personality power and overthrow chapter 10 satan his personality power and overthrow chapter 10 the devil and his methods christ fought three notable battles with the devil and his demons i am pleased to call them first the battle of the wilderness second the battle of gethsemane third the battle of calvary in the battle of the wilderness there were no seconds and no trench warfare and in the open christ met the three onslaughts of his wily adversary three times his enemy retreated the first charge we call distrust that is satan suggested leave off a life of dependence on god take things in your own hand and make these stones bread Jesus draw the sword of the spirit up to the hilt Jesus drew the sword of the spirit up to the hilt in his adversary when he quoted this passage man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the god man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of god matthew 4:4 H W Hodge
both in the new testament and in the old the devil is represented as being most assiduous and tireless in his activities and efforts in job in answer to god's inquiry whence comest thou he replies from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it the declaration is one of rapid and extensive goings and of repeated and careful observation in peter he is said to be walking about as a roaring lion activity scrutiny power and purpose are in his methods thomas a kempis thomas a kempis says know that the ancient enemy doth strive by all means to hinder thy desire to be good and to keep the dear of all religious exercises many evil thoughts does he suggest to thee that so he may cause a weariness and horror in thee and to call thee back from prayer and holy reading the careless and half-hearted christian knows nothing of the devil or his devices but the souls astir for god and the good on a stretch for heaven they are the ones who demand his attention provoke his ire and call forth his machinations says that marvelous man of faith and power pastor bloomhart he who is ignorant of the wiles and artifices of the enemy only beats the air and the devil is not afraid of him bloomhart himself is an illustration in interesting myself in behalf of one possessed he says i became involved in such a fearful conflict with the powers of darkness as is not possible for me to describe christians may live and die all unaware of the devil's being and hate and he may be as indifferent to their religion because they are unharmful of his kingdom but wherever one of the bloom heart type lives there is a big commotion and fear in satan's realm satan works by imitation to make something as near like the true as possible and thereby break the force and value of the genuine this is one of his favorite methods as Jannes and Jambres withstood Moses by their false tricks so is he carrying on by lying wonders his work as his apostles are transformed into angels of light so his wonders are looked on as first class miracles they do indeed discount true miracles what of the revelations of his person god and christ have been revealed to men in bodily shape by figure by representation matchless majestic beautific theophanies have holy men seen of god has the devil power to clothe himself in form and object to the eye can he incarnate himself he seems to have clothed himself in some visible shape at the temptation of christ the form is not recorded perhaps in that of a man doubtless a pious man gathering in the assembly of the righteous or as a pious hermit in the seclusion and retirement of the desert in the days of christ he revealed himself by taking absolute possession 
and sway over the person and used other personalities through which to manifest his being and power his manifestations are disguises insidious and deceptive sometimes as an angel of light with the bloom beauty and species of paradise on him and spices of paradise on him his person unearthly in splendor his voice gentle musical winning with no lines or traces of the fall the devil affects the body and through the body affects loyalty to christ job was tried by his sickness so the devil tries us by sickness in the days of christ he carried on a large business by affecting the body not simply by ordinary diseases but by what is termed possessed with a devil in those cases his work was by breaking down the body in some of its chief functions his method is to assume that shape which will suit his purposes at that time doubtless there was something in the shape or character of the serpent which gave him the readier access to eve garbed as an angel of light his appearance commands him fully to the pure and unsuspecting as a thorn his desires as a thorn he desires to give only pain to those who like paul cannot be seduced nor swerved from the fixed course of fidelity the christians at smyrna he puts in prison that by that process he may fetter their bodies whose souls he could not fetter with matchless cunning and unspeakable fidelity with matchless cunning and unspeakable fidelity he piles his trade to seduce and damn he has access to the minds of men from which he ought forever to be barred but he has so much of diabolical trickery that he clothes the meanest act with the fairest guys and conceals a world of infamy with beautiful rainbow colorings he would wicked good david and provoked him to number israel in opposition to god's will and brought swift and fearful judgment on the nation he readily snatches away from the mind the truth which is superficially received he also blinds the minds of them which believe not and obstructs the light of saving truth his process of taking the word out of the heart to prevent faith and of blinding the mind to the beauties and light of salvation is a very common one with him he makes people sick for the same end as he did job he entices men to do wrong and inflames and urges them on to evil he keeps at it and eats no idle bread he takes the word of god out of the untilled heart and sows tares among the wheat the devil goes out into the wilderness finds us in a fainting discouraged condition the pulsations of faith weak its sky cloudy and its vision misty then he shows us the world from the loftiest peak of observation appareled in its most attractive form and tries to ensnare us by its bewildering glories he never tries in trying to ruin us till the coffin lid is on our folded arms and closed eyes and our happy spirits are bathing in the land where the wicked cease from troubling and the weary are at rest with the wisdom of an archangel and the observation and experience of half an eternity as the captain general of all the hosts of hell he is an adept in the acts and arts of deception and trickery 
and has almost exhaustless sources at command to serve his purposes. A wiser and more powerful spirit than Saturn, save God, perhaps does not live. A more malignant one than he would not be. There is no greater worker than he. He inviterate industry. His inviterate industry and tireless perseverance are the only things in him worthy of imitation. There are in him the things that make him so patent and so dreadful. In the parable of the sower, we are taught the devil's ability to work on the mind and take away the good impression they are made. And those by the wayside are they that have heard, then cometh the devil and taketh away the word from their heart, that they may not believe and be saved. We are also taught how the devil influenced the mind to do the most dastardly things in the case of Judas, chosen as an apostle into high and holy fellowship, a royal vocation, a select company. Satan had much to do in influencing Judas to the great crime that brought him to despair and suicide and to immortal infamy in this world and hell in the next. Satan's thorn in the flesh changed Paul's sorrow into joys, his poverty into wealth, his weakness into strength, his reproaches into sweet heavenly solaces. So mightily does God work to make Satan's all bad work together for good to the faithful ones. As an old saint says, the devil is but a whetstone to sharpen the faith and patience of the saints. He may keep good he may keep God busy polishing the stones which he makes rough. But the devil's dirt makes their luster brighter and they become genuine diamonds of first water. He may keep God busy polishing the stones which he makes rough, but the devil's dirt makes their luster brighter and they become genuine diamonds of first water. His methods are as varied as the men with whom he deals. The devil knows man and that which is much more he knows men. To Eve he came in the guise of a well-wisher, subtle, serpentine and deadly behind the guises. He incites her to disobedience by pointing her to higher heights of godlikeness along paths of sensual and animal enjoyment. A fearful charge of the false and selfish is lodged in her mind against God. No malignity is seen, no distress, no anguish does he use, he allures, deceives, and snares. How striking the contrast in his method with Job, a man by God's own estimate of divinest mould, none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. What methods can he devise for this, the saintliest of the saints? What methods can he devise for this, the saintliest of the saints? He begins by accusing him to God as selfish in his motives, reducing his pity to the worldly, selfish and sinister. No alluring paths, no divergent Flowery ways are pointed out to Job. Not a word is said to him with not a premonition, without a note of warning, as an awful surprise and shock at one fell and desolating blow. His family of ten children are dead. 
his princely fortune gone and one dark hour has bereft him of family and fortune stripped naked by the fearful rapidity and depth of his losses he becomes homeless childless and friendless in a grief inconsolable and a pall of mystery impenetrable and insoluble and insoluble and a pall of mystery impenetrable and insoluble the integrity of job like a column blackened by the smoke but unrent and unshaken by the fiery ordeal is still pursued by the devil still he insinuates and charges the genuineness of job's pity he is nothing of noble fidelity of lofty loyalty in job he still attributes low motives as the basics of his integrity no touch of sympathy no relentings with heartless cruelty and malignity he pursues his death dealing work out of his magazine of hellish engineer he comes with a loathsome disease he concentrates on this one saint o after o and affliction upon affliction till his wife is alienated his friends estranged his enemies triumphant his hopeless bitter grief has not one ingredient to relieve his pious reputation blackening his body tortured his mind in agony this is one method of satans to distress and defame those whom he cannot seduce to the son of god in the wilderness he comes not as he he comes not as he did to job in lowering and seething storms of distress but in the form of apparent sympathy and friendliness it may have been in the guise of a saintly hermit in the wilderness if you be the son of god if thou be the son of god you want this matter of your sonship to god settled and so do i you are very hungry and faint command that these stones be made bread an innocent and a proper way to settle at once a great question and to appease a great hunger then he comes to christ with the sanctity of the holiest place and affords him an opportunity to attest before the wondering and awestruck worshipers his messiahship a shorter and a better road tills to gain credence to his mission than the slow and thankless process of daily teaching and daily ministering and marching to the cross with the dark shadows of its shame and heaviness ever darkening his way satan's desperate venture was to seduce him by the world's array of grandeur power and glory satan plunged job from serene and cloudless heavenly height down to a midnight starless and stormy to the son of god he would be a present friend to save him from pain poverty hunger shame toil and death satan his personality power and overthrow by edward mckenry bounds chapter 11 the devil 
and his methods continued the battle of gethsemane opened on thursday night in an upper room in jerusalem it commenced by 112th of christ's bodyguard being captured by a bribe of 20 dollars the real battle opened thursday evening near midnight he set peter james and john on picket duty inside the garden in a stone's throw of his redoubt the eight disciples he commissioned as the outer watch the battle of gethsemane was fires when jesus fell on his face and prayed saying o oh my father if it be possible let this cup pass from me nevertheless not as i will but as thou will jesus then summoned his human reinforcements but alas human sympathy is comforting but helpless the second time amid legions of devils and the curse of a world's sin he sought his bodyguard the second time they were asleep when jesus won but jesus won the second time they were asleep but jesus won and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven strengthening him the angel took jesus in his arms and wiped the death sweat and blood from his face and comforted him this is one time it seems he was made a little lower than the angels the second battle completed the devil defeated by h w h by h w h the devil is rarely seen in his movements and methods he has rare tact in getting others to do his work and execute his plans his methods are to blind to put a veil on the evil results and all the sad consequences of sin he so blinds that the evil cannot be seen so when the keen eyed david brave true and dear eyed for god yet satan blinded him completely to the treachery infamy and murder in uriah's case in uriah's case so sinners are held by him in unbelief he puts out their eyes to all the light and glory of the shining sun of righteousness in whom the god of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believeth not lest the light of the glorious gospel of christ who is the image of god should shine unto them the power of the devil extends to the mind he can influence the mind insinuate thoughts suggest purposes excite the imagination inflame the patience stir the appetite kindle the fleshy fires awaken old habits and fan old dead flames or light new ones the artless purity of eve he beguiled he beguiled he entered into the half traitorous judas and possessed him fully and made his half formed creation full and his treachery immortal in its infancy he was in the private council of ananias and sapphira a party of their fraud and suggested their lying plan to deceive the apostles his access to the mind is evident in that he snatches away the divine seed implanted by holy lips in the soil of the heart as thought in the parable of the sower in corinthians the devil is called the god of this world the god of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of christ who is the image of god should shine into them the devil uses this world as a veil to shut out the truth of god the light of his glorious gospel and to close the eyes of faith to all the discoveries in the unseen and eternal the antagonism between the children of the world possessed by satan and the children of god possessed by god is set forth by john ye are of god little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you 
than he that is in the world they are of the world therefore speak they of the world and the world heareth them we are of god he knoweth he that knoweth god heareth us he that he that is not of god heareth not us hereby no way the spirit of truth and the spirit of error who is in us god who is in the children of world the devil our faith our hope and our final triumph are in the truth of the word of god greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world satan perverts the things which are truly works of god and mis employs miracles to obscure god's glory the devil often tries to break the soul down and reduce it to despair he tells us to discourage us that we shall never succeed the way is too hard and narrow and the burden too heavy he takes advantage of weak and distracted nerves and suggests fears grace is hid from the sight shortcomings are magnified and infirmities are classed as gross sins sometimes the fear of death is used by satan to quench the fire of faith and the grave becomes something awful he darkens the future heaven and god will be out of sight hidden by a thick veil of tomorrow's cares trials and needs the imaginary disasters failures and evils of tomorrow are powerful weapons in satan's hand he suggests he suggests that the lord is a hard master and that his promises will fail he works on the remaining corruption in the heart and raises a great storm in the soul samuel rutherford says oh if our faith could ride out against the high and proud waves and winds when our sea seemeth all on fire oh how oft do i let my grips go i am put to swimming and half sinking i find the devil hath the advantage of the ground in this battle for he fighteth in known ground in our corruption however matters go However let us go it is our happiness to win new grounds daily in Christ's love and to purchase a new piece of it daily and to add conquest to conquest till our lord jesus and we be so near each other that satan shall not draw a straw or a thread betwixt us he tempts to evil tempters to hasty words to impatience and to carnal reasoning which is his powerfully in our minds back to christ more of his spirit renewed and thorough self dedication and in darting prayers upward by an up, by an uplifted eye and heart thus will we be able to resist and conquer the great adversary of our souls one of the most intelligent and god honored among the saintliest of saints wrote i have keen inward sufferings what are termed the buffetings of satan horror at times has taken hold of me i felt much but feared more the devil may tempt us to think too meanly of ourselves as moses did and too highly of ourselves as peter did in one sense we cannot think too meanly of ourselves but in other but in another we can he persuades us that we are so poor and weak we can do nothing and so we are weakened in faith and broken in effort but his master method is to fill us with self self importance and self ability and then not only is faith weakened but destroyed our efforts and doings may increase in number and vain show but the seal of self and satan are in them all john wesley notes i preached at 8 on that delicate device of satan
to destroy the whole religion of the heart the telling christians not to regard frames or feelings but to live by naked faith is in plain terms not to regard either love joy peace or any other fruit of the spirit not to regard whether they feel them or the reverse whether their souls be in a heavenly or hellish frame satan's method with some is to make them rely too much on frames and feelings with others he deals the reverse and urges them to discard all frames and feelings many anxious errors sprang up with the rank growth in wesley's day and he pruned and trimmed with a master's hand naked faith is often nothing but a sapless arid fruitless unconscious thing and brings an arid fruitless unconscious salvation with it if it brings salvation at all whatever may be his method how numberless his devices the words of his conqueror to us are these behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you of this text miss havergal writes why this is grand power over all the power of the enemy just where he is strongest there they shall prevail not over the very center of his power not over his power here and there not now and then but over all his power and jesus said he is not that enough to go into battle with the devil's brain is prolific in plans he has many ways of doing many things but perhaps perhaps he has many ways of doing each thing with him nothing is stereotyped he never runs in ruts faithful diverse and ever fresh is his way of doing things is his way of doing things indirect this ingenious inside us and graceful are his plans he acts by artifice and always by goel his plans by bible statement are wiles the original word means to follow or investigate by method and settled plan it is not a bad word but one of order arrangement and methods conceived and educated conceived and executed but when the word gets into the devil's hand it is defined by his dictionary it receives a strong tincture a deep coloring of cunning and trickery sometimes satan comes disrobed of his heavenly garments a thorn sharp and pointed and painful a poisoned thorn a thorn that rankles and stays a thorn that cannot be extracted by prayer which retrieves all other ills the saints who have seen most of heaven are often decreed to see most of hell saints who have the fullest and most transporting revelation of god often have the saddest experience of satan paul's thorn was as much to paul as his abundance of revelations his thorn made him more a saint than his vision of the third heavens satan only lifted him higher by keeping him lower satan may come to us in his own native character the thorn breeder and piercer he may put in us thorns which no prayer power can extract thorns which will be poisonous and yield pain but the thorn will enrich grace increase and mature humility and make infirmities strong and glorious satan's thorns will clothe necessities with richest attire change distresses and persecutions into divinest pleasures make room for god's greatest power in us and on us make the lowest point of spiritual depression his highest point of vision and make strength out of weakness and wealth out of poverty satan his 
personality power and overthrow chapter 11 ends